to me. Let's go ahead and do uh, the fourth verse. He's coming soon. He's coming soon. He's coming soon. He's so good to me. All right, we got enough. This man.
know, having this issue where you run the bathroom when you're standing, you don't want to be in the auditorium going in and out, or, you know, mother, you know young mothers or things like that that may have a baby that they uh, don't want to put in the nursery yet, they want to keep it with them, you know, there's all kinds of different things why you might have to come out of the auditorium, we understand that. We're going to try to make it a little bit more uh, conducive to that by having a little more people can sit and still watch the service but not be disruptive and also keep the, the hallways clear. We have to keep the hallways clear. We've not done a great job of that over the last few years um, because it's not been an issue. But now, literally, there's no telling. We can't, you know, if somebody just walked in the front, uh, we, we, we need to be able to at least say, you know, are you here for the church service or, you know, whatever the situation is. So, anyhow, it's going to be good, though, I believe, um, because it will... Take your Bibles and turn to the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 14. Matthew, Matthew chapter 14, 14, 14 New Testament. We'll read a few verses there. It's, it's on your page, page too, but I always like having my Bible in hand. Uh, because there's nothing like reading the Word of God. And Brother Walker mentioned the other night uh, from the Bible. Now, I have used my phone sometimes during the service, but there's nothing like having the Word of God in your hand. I mean, there really is something like the Bible is God's Word. And we know that there's a copy of the Bible at the... At the throne, you know, you know that, that uh, God's, God's word is, the Bible says, forever preserved in heaven. It's, it's, it's right, right there, there, all right? So, so having the word of God in our hands is important. People have died, Christians have died, and getting the word of God into communist countries, you all know that. Thousands, thousands, they've smuggled them in their cars, they've cut the seats out, all the padding out of their cars, and fill up with Bibles to sneak them into East Germany or into Russia, places where there was no freedom of religion, there was no freedom of. Worship. They, 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 uh, they, they, the, the communists would come, come in, and the first thing they would do is take out the political opposition, but then they would take out all the religious leaders. All of them. They would, they would arrest the pastors, and they would either coerce them, uh, interrogate them, torture them. Uh, one preacher I met had been in jail for 13 years. He was not a spy. That's what they accused him of. They accused him of espionage, which put him in jail. But he was not a spy. And he was accused of being a spy, and they kept him in jail. They literally tortured him. Some of the tortures you wouldn't believe that a human being could actually live through. I mean, they're just un unbelievable. Things I don't think, I don't my mind. It's hard to even wrap my brain around. And, but he did that and endured it for the cause of Christ. Okay. And uh, so, so if you want to look, look up some of these stories, there's, of course, there's Fox's Book of Martyrs, which is a difficult read uh, about people that were killed for the, for the faith in Jesus. This man, his name was Harlan Popoff. And he was a, uh, I believe he was either Polish or Romanian pastor. And when the, when the Soviet Union came in, they, they conquered the whole area and they put him in jail. And then there was sometimes he was down in a hole with a bunch of other inmates. And they would give him like, you know, a cup of bean soup with one bean in it. And the rest was just, you know, broth, basically. And then they would work and work and work them all day. And they put him back in their cell. And then other times he would be standing against a wall. And they would whip the back of his legs and torture him. They wanted, they wanted him to confess, confess to being a spy. So, so one, the last time, right before his trial, uh, they had him standing against that wall for two weeks. No bathroom breaks. If he fell asleep, they would wake him up and whip back his legs. Until he was catatonic, until the point where he would have said anything, he would have said he was the devil himself. I mean, literally, they, they, they tortured him that bad. So realize how precious the Word of God is. How precious is this Bible we have in our hands? Other countries don't have that. Most of us have more than one copy of the Bible. Think about that. Other places, they've died just to get parts of the Bible. Parts of other countries right now, reminds with China, they have like, they have to have underground services. They have to sneak around just to have a church service. They might have like one copy of the book of John and they'll read it, read it, read it. one family will have it and memorize it and then give it to another family and they'll read it until they can memorize it. Okay, they don't even get the whole Bible sometimes. They just get pieces of it. And we don't even care if they pick it up and read it. You know, that's going to be on us when we get to heaven. Well, Matthew chapter 14. We talked, we talked last, last week, week about faith, faith. We, we really got, got into a little bit more about faith and how faith is a demonstration through action of what we believe in our heart. See, the world can't see what we believe in our heart. All they can see is our actions. Okay. So Peter uh, was, well, number one, he denied Christ when Jesus died on the cross. And yet yeah, when, when Jesus, Jesus came, came back, back in a week, week this, this is a week, week y'all realize, I don't know if you feel this, the, 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 all the disciples, 
well, well the, the first, first, the first the night, night he was in the, the, the room, but, but Thomas, Thomas wasn't there. Down Thomas, Thomas, we call him Down Thomas, because he didn't believe Jesus rose from the grave. But that, that night after Jesus rose from the grave, he, he did a lot of stuff that first day on Sunday. You know, he met the man going to on the road to Emmaus. He was he was here, there, everywhere. Well, that night he shows up in the middle of the of the service. They were having their they were just gathered together. There's Jesus right in the middle of everybody. That would have been very startling. But he, but he spoke, spoke directly to Peter, Peter letting Peter, Peter know he loved him and he forgave him. You know, Peter, Peter was devastated. Dead. Peter was like, oh, my word. You know, when he, he saw, saw the empty tomb, tomb Peter, Peter and John ran into the tomb. tomb. Peter went in, looked around. Jesus wasn't there. there. You, you know, know what he was thinking. thinking. Okay. okay. You say, well, how does this relate to my recovery? When you're down in that deep, dark hole, hole you're either thinking about relapsing or you did just relapse. And sometimes you wonder, does God still love you? He went back. He went back to a custom sailor. He went back to doing what the world expected him to do. And sometimes we we back back up from God, and we're not doing what we know what God expects us to do. Did God fail us? No, we failed Him. Peter failed God, but Jesus says, "No, I still love you, Peter." But the interesting thing is, faith. We talked about last week is an action word, but it says, I am going to do right. Okay, so letter C, faith is an action word, not a passive word. And faith says, number one, I am going to do right. So we're going to get to Matthew in a second. James 2 says, even so faith, they have not works is dead. We read this last week. Being able to get it. And they say, that has faith and I have works. Show me that faith without that works, and I will show you by my faith by my works. That's what we talked about last week. Moving on. Peter's faith was put into action by his immediate, immediate, immediate obedience okay, to God's call. Now, Peter was the one that, according to church history, they were going to crucify him. And he said, crucify me upside down. I don't deserve to die the same way Jesus died. And they crucified him upside down. Which doesn't sound like a pleasant thing. Uh, crucifixion was considered the most horrible way to kill a uh, prisoner. Okay. It was for the one that really had either multiple, multiple violations, violations or they were just horrible murders and that type of thing. And they, 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 they killed a lot of people well, they crucified a lot of people just to get crucified. But it was a horrible way to die. And Peter did it. He, he said, no, I want you to crucify me upside down. down. So that so was pretty bad. bad. In Matthew, Matthew chapter 14, the Bible says in verse 25, and the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went in, walking on the sea. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, is his spirit? And they cried out in fear. But, but just straightway Jesus spake to them, saying, Be of good cheer, as I be not afraid. And, and Peter answered him, saying, Lord, if he died, if he died, I'll bid me to come to the young water. He said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to Jesus. Jesus said, Come on. He's still saying that to us today, by the way. Hey, hey come out in faith. Why don't you step out in faith? Why don't you work in our youth ministry? Why don't you work on a bus route? Why don't you go out and pass out some tracks? Why don't you invite somebody to come to our youth? Why don't you try to invite somebody to come to more than conquer Sunday school class? He's still like Jesus is still saying, come. He's waiting to see if he responds. See, Peter responded with immediate obedience. He immediately climbed out of the ship in the middle of the storm. Jesus didn't say, okay, hang on, Peter. And he was, all right, you guys were done. And then he says, hey, come on, Peter. That would have been cool. I bet Peter would have been the only one who climbed out. If they saw the storm just go like this, and then Jesus said, yeah, you can come out and walk with me. All those times, I said, hey, I'm first, I'm first, they're all going to climb out with me. The rest of us sit there going, this guy says it's crazy. This guy's an idiot. That storm is raging all out. We can't even see who he's talking to. If they saw it was Jesus exactly, they wouldn't have been surprised. They thought he was a ghost. You know what? It's not faith if you can see it clearly. God, God says, okay, okay, here's what you're, here's your plan. Here's this, I'm going to give you this, I'm going to give you this, I'm going to give you this job, I'm going to give you this part, I'm going to give you this car. It's, it's never laid out like that. We're supposed to operate in faith. We have to operate in faith. We have to pray. We have to beg God and say, God, would you provide? This is a big need. Would you provide it? And God says, okay, come on out. Work in faith. He realizes we have to do our part in faith. Now, Peter walked. When he was obeying, when he was looking at the Savior, he was walking on the water. And that immediate obedience what God blessed. But, but realize we have, we have to relinquish something. We have to relinquish self-ownership. We have to relinquish our self-ownership to God and say, okay, God, I'm going to let you tell me how to be. I'm going to let you tell me who to be. 
you know, we've got people come through RE4 and we're trying to like show them stuff at the bottom. I'm like, okay, I understand what you're saying, but that's just not who I am. Maybe who you are is not who I want you to be. Maybe he wants you to be better. Maybe he wants you to step up. Does for me all the time, like every day. God shows me things every day. When I read the Word of God, when I meditate on the Word of God, every day God is showing me things. You could have handled that better. You can handle that better. Sometimes it's overwhelming. Sometimes there's so many things that God shows me. I'm like, oh, Lord. Okay, Lord, I'm going to try to handle that better. We have to relinquish our self ownership to God. Now, the Bible says that the Son of God loved me, gave Himself for me. Okay. And if we know that God gave Himself for me. And it's, and it's not, not for me to, to be, be me, but, but for me to be, be him. him. It's, it's not, not for me to be Matt Tackett. It's, it's for, for me to be a reflection of Jesus. Jesus. And, and the more the world sees of Jesus, Jesus, and the less they see of Matt Tackett, the more they're going to like Jesus. Yeah. Because the more they see of Matt Tackett, I'm going to make Jesus look bad sometimes. Unfortunately. That's a fact. And so will you. We've all done it. We're getting our heads. We're getting ourselves. We're getting our... Emotions. And they're real, by the way. God, God gave them to us. But we, we have to learn how to turn them over to God. We have to learn how to turn all this over to God. Philippians says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And we believe that sort of, but we don't always live that way. We, we, we know that God wants to work through us, but sometimes we don't want God to work on us. We want God to work. Oh, yeah, praise God. Lord bless. We have 50 people in our youth. And then, I'm just serving God. God. How many show, 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 show up, praise the Lord? Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm, I'm glad, glad you guys came out tonight. All right. But if five people show up, hallelujah, glory to God. Because, because we're still going to do God's work. Because it's not, it's not just about God working through me. I also need to allow God to work on me. So every single week. All right, love you, brother. Take care. You got a little thing from the food. I'm going to the kitchen there. Not much, much, just a little bit. I'm glad you heard that. <laughs> it's no fun over here. But you've got a lot of work on it, too. See, see the world needs to see him, not me. They need to see him. him. And, and before you start, start getting full of doubt and everything like that, he says, well, I think God's been working on me for a long time. time. He, he may have been trying, trying to work on you, you but a lot of times we buck up. A lot of times we're like, okay, God, I don't think you need to work on that. Okay, God, I think that's just fine. You leave that as it is. No, 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 no. We haven't done that one yet. We, have, we, we don't want God to, to, to modify how we're going to listen to Him. We want to listen to Him. We want to listen to Him. Sometimes we haven't got there yet. <laughs> Thank you for helping me make my point. No. Whether it be is God is going to finish what He starts in us. He is not going to leave you hanging. Okay? He doesn't do that. See, See, God, God didn't halfway make the earth. God didn't say, okay, okay here's part of the earth. Okay, okay good luck evolving into something else. No, God, God made it exactly how he wanted it. The Bible says when he was done, it was good. Okay, God, God didn't do it halfway. halfway. He didn't make half, half a dinosaur. dinosaur. He made a baby dinosaur. He made small dinosaurs. He made big dinosaurs. But you know, it takes hundreds of years for a little dinosaur to turn into a big dinosaur. And then we have abundant food, which they say the vegetation was unreal. The vegetation, you know, tall as the redwoods. The only thing close we have now is redwoods. But back then, vegetation all over the earth was just like that. I mean, it was just crazy. It was crazy. So you've got lizards that are all vegetarians for hundreds of years, maybe over a thousand years. They weren't eating each other. They were just vegetarians, just like people were. But then sin came in. And then people started saying, you know what? I want to eat these animals. You realize that God's people weren't eating the animals before the flood. That was after the flood. They were vegetarians. Now, there's too much stuff to get into on that. That's not the subject tonight. All right. But when things get corrupted, appetites get corrupted. And their appetites were corrupted. And they started doing things they should have done. They started eating things they should have eaten. And I think it influenced the, the natural world, too, because I think that's when the animals started to eat each other. They weren't eating each other initially. Most animals that have sharp teeth on the end are not meat eaters. They're all herbivores. There's tons of them around the world. They have really sharp teeth. But guess what? They eat plants. There's a lot of fish that start out eating plants, but eventually eat fish because they run out of plants to eat. Okay. 
sin corrupts you Sin, sin corrupted this earth. God, God did not make our world full of sin. He made it perfect. He made, he made people perfect. But sin corrupts. And when we allow sin in our lives, it does the same thing. It corrupts. And we have to let God cleanse it. We have to let God cleanse us. We have to let God change us every day. Now, now you, you may feel, feel close, close to God, God. You, you may feel, feel like, like you have the best time of meditation, but, but if you don't keep, keep your heart and mind stayed on God, God and stayed on the Lord, you can go out here and say the worst thing, thing you can have a bad attitude, your attitude can flip just like that, that because, because circumstances change. change. You might have a wonderful time with God, but what that does is it prepares you, and you really say, okay, God, I'm getting ready to leave my sanctuary with you. Would you go with me? Lord, would you give me your mind, give me your heart, give me your steps? Let me not say a word that would be coming from your mouth. If you're in my place. place. And, and when we pray, pray that, that prayer, we mean it. That's when God is glorified through us. Because we're allowing God to change us. We have to allow Him to change us so that I can get a better reflection of Him. Yeah. You know, the Hubble yeah. telescope yeah. would be useless yeah. as a mirror was dirty. Yeah. Yeah. Remember that giant mirror? It's like the size of this room. Well, not that big. But anyway, it was a big mirror. But when they first put it up, they had a flaw. They had to actually repair it once. They had a flaw that made it stop working. So so like we, are. Are. we get flaws, flaws and guess what? what? We're not reflecting him anymore. Because all we're doing is showing people us. The key, the key to harmony with God is submission. submission. Okay. Philippians okay. 1 6 says, Be confident, confident in this very thing that he which has begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. He is not going to leave you undone. He's not going to. You know how you cook pancakes, pancakes, you know, you, know, you, you throw, throw the batter down, down, and you let it sit for a minute. And, and you, you know it's ready to flip, and there's a hole show, the little air holes pop through, and bam, turn that thing over, and it's done. done. But if you didn't turn it over, over and you just pulled it off, off the, the, you'd be like, what's wrong? You know, you took it off the frying pan, and you didn't flip it over, so it didn't get cooked on the backside, and then you flip it over a plate, and it looks good on the top. But how do it taste? It's not like you come to church, church and put on your clothes like you're going to church, church. but your hearts. Mm-hmm. Not, not very pleasant. pleasant. The world's, the world's like, like, they went to the church? church? That doesn't look like a church, church kind of attitude. It's, it's not like a Jesus, Jesus kind of situation going on here. God helps us when we put that out there in the world. The key to harmony is submission. We'll finish with this. 1 Corinthians 6, 19. What? Are you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you? What do you have of God? The Holy Ghost is God. The Holy Ghost comes from God. We have it from God. And you are not your own, for you are born with the Christ. Therefore, glorify God in your body and your spirit, which are God's. So start your day off saying, God, I'm yours today, but I'm going to need you to go with me. I, I can't do it by myself. myself. I don't I want the Lord to see me. I want the Lord to see Jesus. Jesus. I want the Lord to, 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 to interact with him. So, so when, when I have that, that, that opportunity to share the gospel, I have that opportunity to share the, the invitation, say, well, I mean, I want to come, 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 come to me. Friday night, come, come to church, church Sunday morning, come to me at 10 o'clock. o'clock. You might even have notes. I don't know. If we're the spirit here, we will. If it's me, probably not. I just don't know. Anyways. But if it's... How am I going to have that opportunity if I'm, if I'm not, not showing, showing Jesus? Jesus? Submission. You have to submit. submit. All the world is here. His will has to be here. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Last week we talked about using your faith to show uh, your works to show your faith because you can't show faith without that proper good works. So that's, so that's where it comes, comes into saying, saying we have to decide we're going, going to do right. We're going to do right at church. We're going to do right out in the world. We're going to do right with all of our interactions. We're going to do right with every single thing we try to do. Because otherwise the world will not see our faith. Now I'm not going to let a single argument go by where I'm not going to say, if you're not sure you're safe, let's take care of it right now. And many of you all have been argued hundreds of times. And I understand that. But God, God help me if, if I never, if, I, if, I, if it's a Friday night and somebody comes in and maybe they didn't want to remind me, they weren't sure. Because I've been in that situation when I was a child where I went to church many times for years, actually. But, but there was a doubt in my mind, and I didn't want to bring it up because I was ashamed, embarrassed. I was like, I've been in church for all these years, people are going to think, who cares what people think? This is between you and Jesus. There is nothing more important than knowing for sure that you're going to heaven. If you're not sure, take care of that right now. Just in your heart, pray prayers. Ask Jesus to save you. You probably prayed better than I could. But talk to the Lord right now. Now, if you are saved, why don't you decide we're going to submit tonight? I'm going to submit my will to his will. I'm going to submit what I want to do because what he wants to do is going to be 
be so much better for me in the morning anyways. anyways. What is it you're hanging out to? Give it to God tonight. Just give it to him. Give it to him. He'll turn into something beautiful for you all. Lord, I pray that you bless each one here tonight. Lord, thank you for being here. Thank you for the listening, Lord. Help us to submit. Help me to submit better every day, Lord. Lord, I have failed you so many times on so many of your fronts. I can't even stop thinking about it, Lord. I'd be useless. But Lord, I pray that you just pick each one of us up tonight. Dust us off. Wipe some of that worldly dust off us, Lord, that we've collected. And help us to be a better reflection of you, Lord Jesus. And go with us with your power and your blessing, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We've got a couple of words to give out tonight. You guys are doing awesome with that. Hey, keep it up. No, no challenges, no change. Let's get some challenges done. All right? Because we all need a little change. Uh, some of you more others. Uh, so. First of all, completing. Uh, let's see. The Overcomers Guide. And get a copy of John. Let's give it a big hand. Give it a big hand. Also completely challenge 17 to get any 10 principles with my brother Jason. Let's give him a big hand. Stay up here, brother. Let's all stand. We're going to pray for the food. Thank you for being here tonight. God bless you. Let's invite somebody to the church for Sunday. Why don't we take a chance tomorrow? Take some of these tracks off the table back there and invite somebody to get saved tomorrow. Say, if you don't feel comfortable giving the gospel, say, hey, if I can show you some verses in the Bible, we know for sure.